Now we come back to uh, one more uh, discussion, introductory discussion from Father Matthew Abraham on Christianity. And uh, yes, the way you want. And again, uh, I, when I talk to uh, Father Abraham and uh, when I said describe Christianity into one word, he said love and the second is compassion. He says Christianity means love. And then I said, if my patient comes to me, I can't tell him, love everybody. He will say, how do I love? And he says, I will narrate it when I give a talk. How to spread the message of love? How can I become, how do I love everybody to whom I meet? Father Ibrahim. Distinguished dignitaries on and off the dais. There's a moving story in the Indian tradition about a young mother who lost her only child. This child, who was a source of her joy, suddenly fell sick and died. The mother in her anguish came across Sri Buddha and asked him, Why did this happen to me? After some moments of silence, Lord Buddha told her to go and get a handful of rice from a family where there is no suffering. She went. Days passed, weeks passed, months passed. Finally, she returned empty-handed. She could not find even a single family where there was no suffering. Suffering, my dear friends, is universal. Whether we like it or not, all of us suffer. Man, woman, child, elderly, Hindu, Muslim, Christian, rich, poor, educated, uneducated, all of us suffer. We all know that sickness is a form of suffering. That is why all of us would like to be healthy. But the question is, are all the healthy people happy? Are all the sick and suffering people unhappy? Can there be happiness in the midst of unavoidable sickness and suffering? Is there something called a happy dying? That's why today's topic is so important. Here I would like to pause and congratulate all those who worked towards organizing this symposium. Even though human suffering intimidates, it evokes compassion. There's a classical story told by Jesus of Nazareth, the story of the Good Samaritan. The Samaritan who happened to come across a Jew who was attacked by robbers, leaving him half dead. The Samaritan, as he traveled, took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The story reminds us that one cannot indifferently pass by the suffering of another. This is fundamental human solidarity. This is love of neighbor. One must stop, sympathize and act. No wonder why today any activity on behalf of the suffering and needy is also called Good Samaritan work. In the course of the centuries, this Good Samaritan work assumes organized institutional forms. One good example of this organized form is the modern hospitals. That's why we are inclined to think that healthcare is a vocation rather than simply a profession or a business. The institutions are very important and indispensable. However, when it comes to human suffering, no institution can by itself replace the human heart, human compassion, human love, and human initiative. Again, the question here is, can there be joy in the midst of suffering, in the midst of sickness? Our hearts are made for joy. A yearning for joy lurks within the heart of every man and woman. Far more than immediate and fleeting feelings of satisfaction, our hearts seek a perfect, 
full and lasting joy capable of giving flavor to our existence. Technological society has succeeded in multiplying the opportunities for pleasure, but it has great difficulty in generating joy. For joy comes from another source. It is spiritual. Money, comfort, health, and material security are often not lacking. And yet, boredom, depression, and sadness unhappily remain a lot of many. Joy always springs from a certain outlook on man and on God. The attainment of such an outlook is not just a matter of psychology, it is also a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Each day is filled with countless simple joys. If we look carefully, we can see so many reasons to rejoice. The availability of basic needs of life like air, food, shelter, clothing, health, a cool breeze, the things we often take for granted, the happy times in family, shared friendship, the discovery of our own talents, our successes, the compliments we receive from others, the ability to express ourselves and to know that we are understood, and the feeling of being of help to others. There's also the excitement of learning new things, the experience of reading a great work of literature, of admiring a masterpiece of art, of listening to or playing music, or of watching a film. All these things can bring us real joy. However, there's also needed a patient effort to teach people or teach them once more how to savor in a simple way the many human joys that Creator has that, that the Creator places in our path. Whatever brings us true joy, whether the small joys of each day or the greatest joys in life, has its source in God, <coughs> even if this does not <coughs> seem immediately obvious. Christianity is sometimes depicted as a way of life that stifles our freedom and goes against our desires for happiness and joy. But this is far from the truth. Faith brings happiness and joy, which is true, full, and enduring. Jesus appreciated and celebrated a whole range of human joys. Those simple daily joys within the reach of everyone, the depth of his interior life did not blunt his attitude or his sensitivity. He admires the birds of heaven, the lilies of the field. He extols the joy of the sower and the harvester, the joy of the man who finds a hidden treasure, <coughs> the joy of the shepherd who recovers his sheep, or of the woman who finds her lost coin, the joy of those invited to the feast, the joy of a marriage celebration, the joy of the father who embraces his son returning from a prodigal life, and the joy of the woman who has just brought her child into the world. Even when Jesus willingly embraced suffering and death, if he could radiate such peace, such assurance, such confidence, such availability, it is by reason of the inexpressible love by which he knew that he is loved by God, his Father. It is a presence which never leaves him all along. It is a mutual indwelling. He said, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Can there be joy at times of trial, sickness? Yes, certainly. Chiara Badona, who lived from 1971 to 1990, experienced how pain could be transfigured by love and mysteriously steeped in joy. At the age of 18, while suffering greatly from cancer, she said, it was really a moment of God's presence. I was suffering physically, but my soul was singing. The key to her peace and joy was her complete trust in God and the acceptance of her illness as a mysterious expression of his will for her sake and that of everyone. She knew that the crucified and risen Christ was there with her. 
and that he is a faithful friend always. When she shared in his sufferings, she also shared in his glory. With him and in him, suffering is transformed into love. And there we find joy. Kiara is just one of the many examples of people who discover joy, even in the midst of suffering. They show that true joy is not a flight from reality, but a supernatural power that helps us to deal with the challenges of daily life. Let me conclude with the words of St. Paul. Suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. On behalf of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of India, I wish you all the best in all your efforts to build a happy society. May God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Father Ibrahim. If I need to describe from his lecture about Christianity, it talks about love and compassion. The prescriptions are, of course, prayer and to face suffering differently. Those who believe in incarnation would know that we did not get liberation in our last birth because there some sufferings were remaining to be faced in this era. I'm talking about those religions who believe in incarnation. Ki mere ko pichle janam mein moksh isliye nahi mila ki mere kuch dukh jhelne baaki the. So your purpose of life is un dukhon ko jhelna. Aur agar aapka purpose of life hi dukh jhelna hai, to wo dukh sukh hai, dukh nahi hai. That's what the gist is. So enjoy your every suffering as a gift of the God, as happiness. And that's what he says, joy in the midst of sufferings with love and compassion.